We're going to learn the chesed from Rivka Imenu. Famous story with Rivka at the well, giving Eliezer water and his camel's water. And we're going to see from the way she did it, how to do chesed. Um, <coughs> normally, there's a series that we're learning from the Beis Levi. This week, we also included the Beis Levi at the end of the shir. But since the Beis Levi on this week, uh, Parsha is pretty short. I took the liberty to to uh, assemble some other mafarshim here on the same topic that he's discussing about this Maisa Rivka. Um, first amongst them is Rashi, and uh, and then others who are also in the Mikras Kedalas here. Uh, very prominent mafarshim, basically three: the Arachayim, the Mikliyakar, and the Sephano and uh, printed them out here for you on the paper. And then finally the Beis HaLevi. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I just wanted to correct from last week is that I don't th- I think I was describing who the Beis HaLevi's uh, dynasty that, that came after him is the legacy that he left. And I made a mistake. I said that his son was the Briskarov. Uh, actually, his son was the Briskarov but his grandson was known as the Briskarov. But his son was a Chaim Brisker, who also was the Briskarov, after the Beis Levi himself was the Briskarov, but the one who was known as the Briskarov was his grandson. Uh, interesting, a small snippet, historical point, that we mentioned the Beis Levi was, uh, at one point, co Rosh Hashiva with the Nitziv and the Velazhen Yeshiva, which his great-grandfather of Chaim Velazhen had founded. And uh, there was a di- different mahalach, a different approach to learning, and basically at a certain point the yeshiva was divided and it ended up that the Beis Levi left the yeshiva and the Nitziv was the Rosh Hashiva. But um, <coughs> they were, even though they had this difference of uh, mahalach, and it ended up that the Beis Levi left the yeshiva. The interesting historical point of it is that not only did the Nitziv uh, mention, uh, remark later that that we didn't appreciate the Beis Levi enough when he was here, and we wish he would come back, but the Nitziv's granddaughter actually married the Beis Levi's son Rav Chaim, <laughs> and Rav Chaim became Korah Shiva with the Nitziv, and he was. Korash Yeshiva was in Nitziv till the closing of the Velazhen Yeshiva uh, years later. Okay, so um, the Beis Levi was known for his great chesed. Uh, he got into trouble for it because when he certain towns he came to, uh, the, it was the Rav in Slutsk, and um, he, he wasn't afraid of, let's just say, certain uh, gvirim, rich people, who had control over over institutions in the in the in the city and in the way things went, and he wanted that the poor people should also be cared for, and sometimes he got into trouble with that because he was uh, he was starting out with the people who had power. But um, th- there's a famous story with the Beis Levi could be told with others uh, as well. But I read it about the Beis Levi, so I may as well tell this to you. I think everyone here heard the story, but there was a yid that came to the Beis Levi, and he asked him if it's possible to fulfill the mitzvah of Dalad Kosas of the four cups of wine by the Pesach Seder with milk. And the Beis Levi said, uh, he was thinking about it, and he said, Do you ha- is, is there wine in the town? So the fellow said, yes, there is wine. So he said, no, you can't fulfill the mitzvah with milk, but I want you to have money for, for wine. So here's some money, and he gave him 25 rubles. So his wife afterwards asked him, what did that fellow come for? So he said, well, he didn't have wine. I gave him money for wine. So she said, 25 rubles? It cost maybe three or four for wine, for his whole family, for four cups. Why did he give him so much? So he said that I understood that if he wants to drink milk for the arbacosos, then he must not have money for meat for the suda and for he doesn't have money for the matzos either. I gave him money enough for his whole 
Later. So that was the chesed going, going beyond what was requested and thinking about the needs of the other who was in front of him. Okay, so let's start. We're going to the Arachu Mashim in case somebody wants to see more of the Psukim here. Um, in Perakot Dalid. There's a breath already. Eliezer is going to seek a wife for Yitzchak and he was sent by Abraham Avinu and he, he makes this um, trick that how he's going to find uh, to identify the right one and he asks HaKadosh Baruch Hu that it should be successful <laughs> and basically what he asks for seems to be that she's going to do chesed with me and she's going to even do more than what I asked for and giving so the Pasuk says in Perak of Dalit, Pasuk I believe you have the copy there. And it will be the girl that I say to her, tilt your jug, and I'll drink. That's my request. Tilt your jug for me that I can drink. The Amra, and she says, she say, go ahead and drink. And I'll give your camels as well to drink. I saw a chaft of the Chalitzak. That shall be the one that you have shown to be for your servant Yitzchak, Va'eda, and with her I will know that you have done kindness with my master. That was his request. So there's a Rashi here, Rashi Pasuk Yudalid. Rashi. This girl who does this kindness, she is fitting for him. For Yitzchak, the son of Abraham Avinu. Because I see that she is doing kindness. And she's worthy to enter into the house of Abraham Avinu. Okay. There's a French word here. Improvished for last. Okay, maybe it has to do with the word proven. But either way, the, the um, Rashi is saying that there was one test here. The test was if she's Gaimel at Chasadim, then she's right to come into the house of Yitzchak. There's an interesting comment here. I don't know the order. Of the, uh, you have the Kliyakar first. Okay, good. So we'll see the Kliyakar's commentary on this Pasuk, uh, beautiful Perushim, and what, what we learned from this Pasuk of Ritko. Now, the first thing that the Kliyakar uh, comments on is. Can I say this for a second? Okay, yes. Okay, thank you. The, the juxtaposition of the Parashiyas of Rivka uh, being chosen and, the, um, and her doing the Chesed together with. with um, I think it would. I think rejecting Canaan. Okay, Avram said, "Don't take any daughters from Canaan." So we have to find out what's so bad about Canaan. Okay, that's. And now, the Chesed of Rivka was what was correct. He didn't want Canaan. So if you look at the beginning of the Kliyakar, he says like this. Here's Rashi. Uya Yishet Laish at Egemal Chasadim. We start about Sad Halema. Oh, no. In the Kliyon. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. You, you my, mistake. my mistake. My mistake. Okay. You tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here, here. It's lower down. <laughs> it's lower down, but it's on the right hand yeah, yeah, side yeah. column. Okay, gotcha. Okay, you got it? Perish Rashi. Who ye like to take Melech Hasadim? Some of Parshas, who the Parshas Ephra Nachiti. Okay, so what? what's the juxtaposition here? You got confused for a second. Ephraim is in the beginning of the Parsha. And Ephraim, we know, was uh, trying to get as much as he could. And even though it seemed like he was willing to be very generous to Avraham Avinu, it was actually the opposite. He said he would do plenty, and he did very little. And he demanded uh, more. more and more payment in exchange for what Avraham was taking. So this is the contrast. Ephraim Achiti in the beginning of the parasha. And now Rivka. Kigam hu ayam Ephraim 
was from Ches, was from the Zara Kenan, from the family of Kenan. Shenemar Kenan Yalad of Tizan Bechara of Ches. We see that Ches came from the family of Kenan, the second son. Tzidain, the eldest, and then Ches. The Ephraim, Hayara Ayin. Okay, Tziva the Harchik HaKnanim, Shem Bali Ayin Ara. Okay, now we're going to pause there. So, the Ayin Ara means that a person stingy, a person only wants for themselves. They don't want to give <coughs> the opposite of generosity. And that's what Ephraim displayed. And that's what Avram was saying, don't go to Kinnan. The Kliyaka says elsewhere that the Gematria of Ayin Ra is 400. And that's why there's a remiss this with 400 pieces of silver. Okay, thank you, though. I don't know if... No, it's okay. Okay, you have no. something to share with. Wait, so it's 400 is the Gematria of? Ayin Ra. And, and he's, he points to several places in Tanakh where we have the number 400, and it's always an allusion to Ayin Ra. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. So, on the other hand, the Gemara tells us... Um, okay, so he goes on about this and discusses this, um, if you go down to the bottom of the paragraph, it's beautiful. The whole thing is really worth reading. Uh, beautiful. But um, it goes on that um, in the end of the paragraph, um, From here, yeah. Eliezer learned, The only test was with this Midah. Oh, I will ask for is that she gives me to drink. I'll give more than you requested. I'll give to you. I'll give to your camels. That she's giving me more than I asked for. That uh, this is what's going to be the house for Yitzchak is going to be uh, hope for the, all the Briyas, for everyone to benefit them all. Now, there's an interesting question that the Kliyakar and others deal with, and that is that the word Gamal, it happens to be that it's Gamalim that are in this Parsha, the camels, and the word Gamal seems to be similar to the word Gemilas Chasadim. <coughs> And what, is there any connection between Gomel and Gemilas Chasadim? And uh, the question is also asked if there's a connection between the word Vayigomel, that means to be weaned, and we find in last week's parsha by Yitzchak Avinu. He made Avram made a big party for Yitzchak, Biyayim Yigomel, as Yitzchak Benay, on his second birthday when he was weaned. So, what the, is there a connection between Gomel and Gemilas Chasadim? So, interesting comment here from the Kliyakar on the top of the paragraph here. Trafe animal. What do you say? Trafe animal. Trafe animal. Yes, that's true. The interesting thing is there's another trafe animal that is known to do kindness. It's called the Hasida. Yes. Okay. Historic. Historic. And, and that's, the Kliyakar actually mentions that together with the Gomo here uh, as well. <laughs> Okay, let's look at the top of the, the second paragraph. Oh, yes. Interestingly, Rav Hirsch also speaks about this in this parsha. I'm not sure if we'll have a chance to get to what his comment is about this. But uh, it's an interesting connection. Gamal and Gemilas Chasadim. So, I guess how would we translate Gemilas Chasadim if I was to translate it? Um, to, to be Gomel means to, to, uh, to benefit, to give, to uh, bestow, that would probably be the best word, to bestow, okay? And you're, uh, you're bestowing upon somebody else, that's goy melchesed. Valtzad remes. now the top of the second paragraph, on the Kli Yokar. Valtzad HaRemez, Iskir Gemalecha, Lashen Gemilus Chesed, Karav Lashen Gemalecha. V'chein Darshu Chazal, Es HaGomel, Zubavel, Shenemar, Es Gemulecha, She Gemalt, Lanu. So we see that uh, the Chazal making the connection between uh, bestowing and 
this is actually something negative, what Bavel did to the Jewish people, and there's going to be retribution towards them for what they did when they exiled the Jewish people and oppressed them. But we see that it's the bestowing the, that's discussed here. The word Gomo and Gemulech, Gemulech. The Ratzab said, so, in he taisif loimar vigam gemalecha ashke simna milsahi. That's a simna. If she says, not only I'll give you, but I'll give your gemalim, so she loves gemilat chesed so much that she loves gemalim. She kol kachi ayheves midas a gemilat chesed ad asher he ayheves kol anikas b'shem midasu. Anything that's called gomal or gemilat chesed, she likes that. Ki zed over tivi because that's something that's natural that she loves Gemilat Chesed so much. And he brings the Chazal say about the Chasida. Chazal Darshu is a Chasida, this bird called Chasida Shaisa Chasida Sim Chabuseha. Al Kain, so you see that Chasida is called Chasida because it does Chesed. So Ein Rachai Kluparish, Kam Kain Gemilat Gomo, that it also is called Gomo because it's Gomo Chesed. Ki Ulai Tivai Ligma Chesed Zelaza. Maybe the Gomal's nature is to um, to do chesed one with the other. So that's why um, she likes Gamalim, she has a natural affinity to Gamalim because and she'll say Gam Gamalecha Ashka. Does the Chasid does Chasid with the other Chasid as well? Yeah, the Chasid does Chasid with other Chasidas. It, it's in called considered way? a non-kosher bird. I know, okay. but, what, but in what way? I'm just scared. Oh, in what way do they t- does the chasida? I assume that they feed each other, or they protect each other. Okay. But this would be a very interesting study to know <laughs> if, if the gemalim actually uh, somehow help each other. They travel together in the midbar. Does that is that some protection for for one gummel towards the other? <coughs> So Any, a lot of yeah, we would like to think it's that. It's not La Dafka Gummo. So he says, Sinna Milsa. The, the, um, I'll just quickly tell you what, what I think it, Rav Hirsch says, and that is that um, the Gamalim, it's uh, totally unrelated to this idea, the Gamalim drink so much before they go into the Midbar that they, they, um, they're like they're weaned, that they don't need any more water. It's a gummo is something that Stored. becomes stores. It's a storehouse for water that now it's self-sufficient for a very long time that it doesn't need anything, and um, so it's connected to the word by yigamal of being of being wind. Yes. Now, I, I will tell you that I heard, we heard a Dvar Torah from Rabbi Rabbanu with his son here on Shabbos Bar Mitzvah came from his father, but his father was quoting Rav Moshe Shapiro, Shlita, in Eretz Yisrael, and he connected the word Vayigama to Gemilas Chasadim, which seems like the opposite, because Gemilas Chasad means to bestow and to give, and Vayigama means to become that independent. totally independent, and he said that the greatest kindness is to give to someone until they become, so they don't need to return and come back for more. Beautiful, Joshua. That's the connection between, that's the ultimate gemilas chesed, mm-hmm. is to cause somebody to become vayigama. Right, right, now they could be self-sustaining. Benchigama. Benchigama. Okay, <laughs> I, um, I want to look into this more, because my hunch is that it's actually a little bit the opposite. Vayigama, Sometimes you find words in the Hebrew language that, um, let's say, you want to remove something and you want to take away the roots from the ground. You want to take the stones away from the ground. You want to, the removal of something. In the English language, you even have the same thing. If you, uh, if you take the pits away from a, a, a fruit, so that's called uh, pitted olives, right? They don't have any pits. The pits were pitted. Okay? In, in Hebrew, if you take away the roots, your your uh, uh, it could be to take root, but it could also to remove the roots. They shari shacharel. You got to went down to the roots, or to you, you take a, a field and you take out the stones. So that's called being that's called um, 
and that, that's also I got the exact word I think by Yisrael, but to take away. So, so I was thinking that actually the real meaning of Kamila's Chesed is to bestow and not to become independent. But by Yigamal means that it's the opposite of bestowing. It's a removing, it's a removal of any need to be bestowed upon. It's just a question of which way is the main root of the word. Is the main root of the word that you're becoming Gamal is independent and weaned and you don't need anything? Or is the main root of the word to bestow? And so when you come, is the way Rav Moshe Shapiro was saying it is that Gemila Chesed is taken from weaning because when you when you give to the extent that the person doesn't need anymore, so that's the ultimate giving. But really, the, that's the main root of the gama, or the main root of the that goyma means to bestow, and when becoming independent is becoming the absence of being of, 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 of needing to be bestowed. Anyway. So back to us, how to do chesed properly. So anyway, the idea that we take out from the kliyakar, whether this uh, idea of kamal is a remez or not, to Kamila's chesed, is that she had a love for chesed. Okay? She did it with the abbas chesed. She did way above and beyond. And there's a beautiful comment, uh, one more comment from the kliyakar here. And that's a strange comment in the Gemara Mesech is Tanis. And if you look at the end of the line, where it says Tanis in parentheses, the Gemara says that any Kala that doesn't have beautiful eyes, no, that has beautiful eyes, then the rest of her body doesn't have to be checked. Razal Amru, Kol Kala Einel Yafais, Kol Gufa in No more search is necessary. So he says, what does that mean? Just because she has beautiful eyes? We see that's not so. There are many girls who aren't beautiful and they have beautiful eyes. So what do you mean the rest of her body doesn't need any vidika? What are Chazal interested in beauty for? That they're looking, giving you Simon and how to check out if if she's so beautiful, Elavada, definitely. See where I am? Shenas nu eitzah in the second column. Yeah. Elavada shenas nu eitzah livdaik acher masal. What they did the is they were looking at her midas. <coughs> and the zosa eitzah yutsa. This is the best advice. She yivdaik in mibalas ayin yafet. Look at her eyes to see if she's generous in her her approach to looking towards others. Ugaimelas chasadin. If she has good, uh, uh, generous outlook towards others, so then, then without a doubt, she has she shalim in all the other midas. And where do Chazal learn this from? This was the only thing that Eliezer looked for. Because this is something that shows is a vinyanav that you can learn out all the other midas from if your person has this generosity uh, of spirit then you don't have to check further and this is what we learned from Mithka Yimeinu so now um, to, to continue further in the, the, the story of Rivka so we, going on I didn't print the rest of the psukim here but um, uh, want, before we continue, uh, in the Psukim, if you turn over to the next side of the page, there's one comment from the Sephorno on this Pasuk. It's a Dibra Maschil. Vigam Gemalecha Ashke. Okay? It might actually be. It's yeah, the second, not the small one. Mark that Sephorno. But uh, right one. after the Arachayim. Okay? Right after the Arachayim, yeah. you see right the comment. Yeah. Oh. Very small print. Yeah. Take out your magnifying glasses. <laughs> you don't need to. Okay. So he says, Kiroi Lishoel, she Yisrael Pachas Mitzarchai, Shleila Triach. Viroi Linodiv, 
Sheyosef v'yaser l'shoel demach soira ayaser. Eliezer was the shoel. He was the one who was asking for the, he was the recipient. And he was asking for less than what he actually needed. And that's Derech Eretz. Not the person needs a lot, but to ask less pachos mitzarachai. Why? Shaloy la triach. He doesn't want to be a burden. So he asks only for a little bit. But the one who is the Baal Chesed knows that trick. They know that, that uh, the person doesn't want to be matriach me, and they don't want to ask for everything that they might need. So let me think, maybe they, their need is really greater than their, what they requested. And therefore, I'm going to see and look and, and uh, respond with even more than what they asked for. And that's what Rivka did. And the royal and if somebody is generous, to Yosef to add and to do even demach sarah yaiser whatever they need, and perhaps even even more. And that's what we see here. So if we continue now to the actual um, carrying out of what what transpired when Rivka came to the well, and as I said, I didn't print out these psukim, but um, so just briefly. So it says. That the Vayarat the Eved the Grasa the Eved ran to uh, to greet her. Uh, I believe that the uh, I also didn't put this up that the Medrash Rabba here like to, to to conclude the Medrash uh, in the in the Shir says that Vayarat Eved the Grasa um, means the Gras Maseha Tovim. That's what it means. That he saw he ran to greet her. Because he saw um, the grossa means to uh, towards her, right, and towards her amaisim told him of what he had what he had witnessed here, what he was hoping to witness. Um, okay, so it says like this: um, oh, I'm sorry, pasuk Give me a bit to drink from your cod, from your jug. Drink, my master. And then she rushed. She tilted her jug on her hand. And she gave him to drink. She finished giving him to drink. I'm going to give your camels as well to drink until they have finished drinking. Okay? And then and in one, uh, another pasuk says she rushed she took the remnants of the jug after Eliezer had finished drinking she poured it into the trough for the animals she ran further to the well to, to draw more water and she drew water and more water for all of his camels. Okay, and let's let's pause there. So the next commentary that we have here is the Arachayim. Okay, and the Arachayim. What pause is it on? Yudches. Okay, Yudches. So now. The beginning, the, okay, so but it says like this. She didn't pour the water into a cup, and or into, she, she didn't actually didn't have a cup with her. She just had this big jug. jug okay, so she, uh, it was heavy. And she, would, she didn't just put it down and say, okay, here's the jug, enjoy. take a drink, enjoy. But it said in the Pasuk that she was still holding the jug. She took it down. She's holding it in her hand. She tilted it for him to drink. And she gave him to drink. From the jug. Not from, from the jug. Hand. Not from her hand. No, not from her hand. But she was actually holding up the jug right. for him to drink from. Tilting it. Tilting yeah. it. That's right. Okay. It says the Arachayim. Fatoma should say, Perish, Kineget, Amarta, Gemiya. That's the first contrast. You asked for just a bit of water, and I'm saying, you said, and I say, drink, drink a lot, 
Drink as much as you want. Shaseki Chetzacha. Veloy. Now here's the second point. Veloy Shayishtahu Biyadai. Not that he should have to drink with his own hand. Elhi Titrach Vimitzvah. She says, I will be Matriach. Lashkai Tsame Lemayan. To give water to someone thirsty. That he shouldn't have to put the effort to pick up the heavy jug to drink. And that's what it says that she gave him to drink. Not only she she held up the the card for him. She was actually bringing it close to his mouth and drawing it forth. Uh, so you shouldn't even have to tilt the cleave. So what, what's amazing is here, you know, she saw that he was tired and he was weary from a journey, but still, Eliezer was a strong, strong man, okay? Maybe he was, maybe he was the one soldier of Abram that beat all the four, the four kings, you know, and was the strongest, uh, uh, many men of a whole army, but he was a strong man. What's the gematria? Is it 318? That's, that's the number of soldiers that Avram sent, yes. right? Yeah, 318. And, and nevertheless, uh, what many people would see, many of us would say, why should I do, it's, I understand I should do a chesed for something, for somebody that they, they're lacking. They're missing something. They don't have so I will make up their chisara and I will give them what they're lacking. They can't do by themselves. If they can't do it themselves, I'll do it for them. But here she didn't, she didn't just do that. She said, what could I do to lighten this fellow's plight? Even if he could do it. It's true he could do it. But I want to see what could I do to make it just that much easier for him. Unbelievable. Um, and she, she um, held the bucket for him and she tilted it for him. Now, there's another point here that the Aram Chayim makes here, and that is that there's a contrast in the Psukim from what Eliezer asked that should be the simon, and from what actually she did. Why? Because if you look, we'll go backwards. What she did was she first gave Eliezer to drink. And when he was finished drinking, then she said, also to your camels I will give to drink until they're finished drinking. So first she gave him to drink. And only after he finished drinking, then she said, oh, what about the camels? Don't worry, I'm going to give your camels. But in, the, in Eliezer's request, what he requested was that she should do, right away, she should offer that if I ask for her that I need to drink, she'll say, you shall drink, and also your camels shall drink. And that's the passage that we copied before Pasuk Yedalit. So what happened that she didn't right away offer the camels to drink, she only waited till later. Okay, good question? Mm-hmm. Okay. Can I ask another question? Yes. The halacha is, you give your animals to eat before you eat. Yes, that's a good question. And the Archaim also asked that question. Okay. And I'm not going to read that part of the Archaim okay, today, I don't think. But he, you'll have some homework. If you're bothered by that question, you want to He's find an answer? Yes. Yes. He discusses that question right here on this page. Okay. So the question's on him. How can he eat what you're in? Okay. So Pasuk, the, the next part of the Archaim deals with this question which we just raised. The time shall I take it? Why didn't she say immediately, Gam ligmalecha, also to your camels I will give to drink. This was even additional vatranus, additional uh, generosity here of giving. By saying? By doing this. He's going to explain how, how this was so thoughtful of her. If she would have rush. first said this, she rush. if she would have said this first, that I'll give to your camels before you actually started drinking, so he says, wow, she has a lot of work to do. She has to, she's going to give my, all my camels to drink right after, as, after I finish drinking. So let me rush. Let me drink quickly. 
But before she told him, so this Yachshab he'll think, Kihuza Kalatarach. This is all she's doing. This is there's nothing coming after this. So he'll drink slowly at his own pace. And he'll take his time. And then as soon as she finished drinking, immediately Amra Gamluk Malecha Heshab. Then she said, I'll give your camels to drink. Because we said before that camels don't necessarily have to bring, they bring a lot of, you know, uh, when they start drinking, they still have it's very possible that he was very thirsty, but the camels may not have been thirsty. Okay. That's why that may answer Michael's question also, that, that, that he, he was parched. Camels may not have been necessarily been thirsty. Well, it depends that point, whether they had drunk before or not. So. It's a question whether they had drunk. Well, they did, but okay. they a while ago. Beautiful yeah. thing about explaining Chumash is that there's so many possible explanations. <laughs> this is another I mean, one. They're coming to Maybe they so can't well. were not as thirsty as he was. So. And maybe that's why they didn't have to be strained. Drink first. Okay. Um, the Archaim does, it's good to see it, but he says something along the lines to an, of what you're saying to answer this question that only if it's a regular feeding time, so then you give the animals first, but if it's actually danger to, 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 to a human, then you give the human precedence. And if he was so thirsty that it was, it was a dangerous situa situation to Eliezer, that he had traveled so far, and it was a possibility of him dehydrating, then actually you'll give it the person first before the animals. Even if it's a regular feeding time? Uh, well, if, it's, if, if there's a danger of a person, the person gets precedence. It is just that they're both hungry, and uh, okay, he, he ate his last meal, but now it's in it's, in, it's meal time. What if it's then you give the animals, the animals first. But well, if no, there's a danger the okay. to yeah. the person, then you give precedence to the danger to the person over the danger to the animal. But he's saying there may have not even been a danger to the animals because they weren't so thirsty. My, my, my thing is that it's very awesome possible that even Eliezer wasn't thirsty, but don't forget, right. what he, he said this was, was, a test. This was uh, a test of what's going to happen when I meet her. Okay, if he's going to, if he's you. going to ask this, you might have then, then, then I'll know. Uh, yeah. Now? Yeah, yeah right. he's just a dare. No, uh, hurry real quick. So, you know, that, that, that's just a test to see if, 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 if okay. her action will fit her, you know, the, the thing that she said, he said out. Right. These are the things, the steps that he should, you know, should happen. Okay. Okay, very good. So, just, so just to recap from from what the Arachayim is telling us, a beautiful concept here is that um, what she was actually doing the Chesed with a Chachma here, with a, a certain shrewdness of thinking, what is the best way that I can make the recipient the most comfortable here, <coughs> that he should drink without being rushed and without being hurried and that's what she was trying to accomplish. So by, by, by not offering to give the Gemalim first, that was, instead of being uh, somehow detracting from fulfilling the request of Eliezer of the signs, it was even better, because it showed even more chesed. Now, the Sephorno, um, you have copied there. There's another sh two brief comments about this tremendous chesed of Rivka. Um, Okay, Fatimaya, yes. Okay, so she rushed. That's another thing here, that she was running. Fatimaya, she rushed and she poured the cod to the shoikas to the, and, and then she went and drew some more water. So, what, what, what do we see from this rushing? Fatimaya. So it says this for Kiamihiros, Bavaydas, and Mishores, when there's a uh, quickness, alacrity, in the service of the one who's performing a service, yoyre that shows that shows that the one that you're performing it for is chashav, is important to you. So she was actually displaying how much she was concerned for him and the chashivas for him, not only by calling him Adoni, but by showing that, look, your needs are so important that I'm going to rush to fulfill them. When a person does a chesed in that way, well, that shows speak an actual, himself. right, the actions speak of the chashivas, of the importance that you attribute to the one that you are performing the service for. Okay, now, 
if you one more comment here by the Sephardo, the last one on Pasuk Chavez. Okay, if you see that at the bottom of the paragraph, Kasha Kila Gemal and Lishdays. The Zeal Yazman Ma. She waited till the camels were all finished drinking. Okay, and now there's another pasuk that we didn't read that the pasuk says, and the man who was Eliezer, Ba'ish Mishta Eila, he was waiting and watching uh, with with um, uh, dumbfoundness of uh, a question mark here. What's going to be Mishta Eila? Machrish, silent. So what was he waiting silently to see for in the end here? Says the Sephora. It was certainly, it must have been a, a, some time after she had finished drawing the water. So she drew the water and now there's enough water for the camels to drink and she didn't just leave. And say, oh God, I finished my job. Goodbye. I have work to do. I'm out. She waited there. Maybe they'll need something else after she's done. And the rush, and all this time, she didn't ask for any, uh, any pay, nothing in exchange. All of her actions were pure chesed, and that's what he wa- that's what he saw in the end. That's what he saw. Um, when he was waiting and seeing what was going to be and he saw this in the, through all this time she didn't do um, uh, he did, she, she didn't she didn't was chesed gomer yeah she, there was no tikvas ezeschar okay so what, what this actually can t- ties the beginning of the parasha to the end of the parasha because um, again besides Ephron you see the contrast of the Canaan not having the iron raw, um, but we see it says in the pasuk. I think check this up, but it says Vasisa Chesed the Emes. You'll do Chesed the Emes with me. And Rashi comments, this is Parsha, that a Chesed that you do with the Mason is called Chesed Shel Emes. That's Al Nasi Kurein Benetran. The Sisi Medi Chesed. Al Nasi Kurein. Does it say here in this week's parsha? No, that's in. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's not this week's parsha. But what we do see with the Kvura is that Chesed, a person does with Mason is called Chesed Shel Emes. And why is that true Chesed? Because when a person does Chesed for somebody who's deceased, they can't pay them back. Mm-hmm. They're never going to say thank you. They're never going to pay them any money. But I thought Chesed was true no matter what. They give true Chesed. You, 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 you don't get If someone pays you back 20 years later, let's say you gave them money and they, they got money, you lose your scar? No. It's Chesed. You think that? I don't know. But that was what I was going to ask. Immediately after this, Eliezer gives her jewelry. So in a sense, he's, he's paying her. And she, she doesn't ask for it. She, ask for it. she, she had ask no for motive. It. She was strict, her motive was strictly to do chesed with no expectation. Yeah, uh, no expectation. Maybe not. Maybe this Maybe is not. If you, you could always well, look. Just maybe like not. She got the jewelry. <laughs> she saw the jewelry. <laughs> no. no. Maybe not. I mean, maybe not. Common courtesy. In the desert, you come. A guy's coming with his car. He's running out of gas. He's on the third empty. Every you know, fill him, you know, fill him up because you expect if you're going back the same way, you get filled up too. Okay, so we have a, we have a great grandson of Rivka Yemenu who is so positive to do Chesed over here. You would have done it the same way, chesed the same chesed. way that Rivka did it. Now, I, I just want to end off. No, I, I don't have time to do it. Is, yeah? <laughs> Ten thirty. We want to end off. We didn't have a chance to read the 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 uh, the uh, Beit side, but the he goes along the lines of the Mefarshim that we spoke about until now, and finding that the 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 uh, not only the generosity of Rivka, but the fore, the forethought and the uh, what uh, the the 
the wisdom that went into her Maisa Chesed here and how she did that in the timing of what she did and uh, it's actually more a uh, contemporary type of thought because he says that um, she was he was wanted to see how would she react to the fact that there's a stranger here who has, uh, has germs and is unclean and maybe he's carrying who knows what type of illnesses and she's going to use this jug to give him to drink and what's she going to do? How's she going to do that? Is she going to take the same jug with the same water home with her? So he was watching to see what she's going to do with the water but she passed the test because she would have been stupid to take it home so she what she do? She poured it out for the Gemalim, that water. And then she went to pour, to draw more water because she didn't want to make him feel bad that maybe this water is dirty and I don't want to bring it home to my family. I don't think that you're, that you're unclean. So, he, so she went and she drew more water for the Gemalim so that he won't feel that it was only natural that he gave the rest of the water to the Gemalim. And uh, also, you look at more commentaries, you'll find more and more no, 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 about no, the chesed the exact of this guy. of what happened over there, but my other question would be, what's the bigger chesed? If somebody asks you for water and you give it to them, or you see someone who is thirsty and you give it to them without them, without being asked? Without being asked. Without being asked. Which would be the bigger chesed? Right. Without. She should have... This would have been the best if you wouldn't have even asked. And the girl who, who uh, doesn't... See, didn't you? Maybe she doesn't have enough time to even ask. Go ahead. It's good that you have questions. It's good to have questions. And, um, it's good that you have answers. Yes. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have all the answers, but, but I hope that all these questions, that you take them and you discuss them with others and think about them, and if you come up with answers, please share them with me, because it's very, uh, very good question.